Hey, what's up guys? Thought I'd do a quick update on where I am so far. No one really, uh, I, I didn't get too many views on the video and it's, uh, it's fine. I'm just putting it up there because, you know, it's better than storing it in my phone. I can make the video, post it, delete it. But, um, I got the, uh, the head finished. So the, I don't really want to touch it too much. My hands are dirty, but I got the, uh, the valves, the valve seal, the cam, the rockers, tappets, I got all that in there. Got the car rebuilt and put back together. Don't really want to touch that too much either, but I got the rings on the piston. Um, I actually put the high flow oil pump away because a few people in um a couple of comments on like thumper talks and stuff like that, they said that they weren't running the high flow oil pump and it they didn't really notice a difference. The uh, the engine still performed fine. And I, I forgot that my engine is actually a 70 engine and the 70 engines have a better, I believe it's a thicker, a thicker crankshaft rod, a better flowing oil pump and a stiffer or more heavy duty clutch. I think that's the difference between the 70 motor and the 50 motor. So I'm pretty sure if it's running a little bit better of an oil pump, maybe the passage is a little bit bigger on this motor. I'm not sure. I haven't looked at the specs. I just know the oil pump clutch and rod is the main difference with these motors besides the gearing and size of frame and all that, which is just getting out of context for what I'm aiming at. So I didn't really want to crack the cases anyway until I do like a stroker kit or, or something like that. So, uh, and I believe once you have like a stroker kit, then yeah, you're going to need more oil. But the uh, the 70 motor, you're only going up 28 cc's. And I personally don't think it's insane to the point where you need that much oil. Um, I mean, it depends. There is some people who say that they didn't use it and that was just with the 88 cc kit. Then there's people that have the race head kit and said they didn't need to use it. I have a 70 motor. I feel like it'll work fine. If I if I notice it's being like deprived or anything, I'll uh, definitely then, you know, stop and do all that. But um, for the most part, I think it's going to run fine being the fact that it's a 70. And even if not, I think it would still lubricate fine. They're just probably talking for like extremely, extremely hot temperatures, which I don't you know, I'm not at a track, a uh, track. I'm not at a track. I'm not running some like, you know, crazy course race. I don't beat the balls out of my bikes. I do ride them in the back on the track that I showed you guys in the last video, but nothing too insane. So I think I'll be fine. But, um, I was just giving you guys an update showing that, uh, this thing is, um, put together and ready to go. I just have to, I clean my bike. Uh, I just have to disassemble the head and then slap this thing together, slap it on, run it, give it a good tune. I'm actually gonna drain that oil and put fresh Valvoline motorcycle on it for a design for wet clutches. And I'm using a, I think this one is 20, 20W50, which other people say you gotta use 10 up. Yeah, this one's 20, 20W50. I've used this for, um, my bikes and they've been fine haven't like had any heating issues uh they say use non-synthetic 10w40 but um i just went one grade up that's you know what my bike's like so i'll keep running it and then when the summer comes and it gets really really hot it's it's also good because a lot of people with the heat going up i don't really live in a very hot or humid climate i'm like right in new york long island so you know, we get the best of both worlds. Our, our summers can be like springs. I don't know. They're all over the place. But for the most part, the oil is fine. I'm not going to, like I said, split the cases and put that other stuff in. I don't want it to be too complicated of a build because I do have other builds going on right now. And, um, you know, but the good thing about this build being like uh, taking place and my bike being out of commission, even though it's fully running and everything like that, I just like washed everything on the motor so that no dirt had the chance to get in. I actually put, figured out what was wrong with this bike. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it or maybe I did mention it in older videos, but this is a LXR 140 by Pitster Pro. 
if you guys know or know these bikes, that's not the original motor. I do have back here, I do have the, um, that's the original 140 CC from this bike. Um, I have to fix something with the crankshaft. The threads are a little out of whack. So either I'm going to try to fix the threads and tap new ones so I could get the flywheel on. But if not, I'll spend the hundred bucks on a uh, TB and get the new crankshaft. And then that motor will go back on here. But I put a, you know, regular, uh, Chinese pit bike, 125 motor on. And, uh, I don't know. Today I got it together. I have a tube in the front that I literally patched four times and was saving just in case I needed it for this bike. And next thing you know, there's a flat. I put that tube in. The tube is perfectly fine. People always say, oh, I only go do one patch. I do blah, blah, blah. I, I patch them. I mean, the patches work. That's what they're there for. If you do it right, it works. And um, I had this thing back in the trail and I was like, you know, doing the little jumps. And it is such a night and day difference, obviously, from the 50. I wasn't even like used to like using the clutch and stuff like that. Like, but, um, it was fun to, uh, actually finally ride this thing. Um, the reason why I wasn't riding it before is because I swapped this motor and it stopped. My friend tried riding it and it just, it stopped working. It just wouldn't start. Took the carb apart twice. And on the third time I was thinking it was the float. So I popped the filter off and, you know, sometimes dumb things like this happen. The choke was stuck open and the lever, right? on the side here that lever wasn't opening the choke it was just the motor was just choked the entire time so that's why it wasn't running or it sat overnight and i came out and kicked it and started right up so i'm like but it was the choke so now the the bike starts right up it has an open pipe i gotta weld something up to uh you know do that i don't really need to but for a while this maybe i won't weld it because that exhaust is for this motor um I just got to, it's just going to motivate me more to fix the other motor and the other exhaust will be, it's fit for that one, the Pitster exhaust that it comes with. But I just got to rebuild, uh, redo the back brake caliper and bleed it and then that'll be fine. And then TB is going to get a little bit more of my money when I get the 140 motor back in here just for a couple little gadgets to, uh, you know, top it up and make it, I just want to make it complete, like, you know. Running, driving, stopping, front and rear brakes work, uh, suspension dialed in, levers and all that dialed in. And uh, yeah, so I, I figured I'd show you guys that. That's going to be a whole nother like, build on a, another video when I actually do this thing up from the ground up, clean up, paint, graphics, everything. This is going to be like my, my uh, what is it, 12, 14 race bike. And uh, this one's going to be my little 10 inch race bike. And, uh, yeah, so I, I kind of dragged this video out a little bit, but I wanted to just, you know, give you guys in depth what's really going on. Um, like I, I mentioned, there's another bike that's like another, a bike that I'm going to have specifically for stunting or whatever you call it. This, I'm going to throw on this bike, the, uh, 50, cause it came with the bike and, uh, my friend actually paid a decent penny for this when it was, when they first came out with them. So that and that uh bbr cover that was all with the bike when i got it from him then i got to throw the new tires on i'm going to paint the rims on this 50 black so i want to do black rims i'll probably keep the hubs that silver color i don't know what i'm going to do with the frame i'm going to redo the bars raw them out and then uh clear coat them and i think i'm going to go with white plastics with like maybe black and red, mainly black, but a little bit of red graphics. And then, um, I don't know, probably my red Scott grips. Maybe I'll even keep the front fender red or black, one of them. But uh, I think that's what I want to go with for now and until I figure out what's, what's what. I still have foot pegs, a shifter, and um, a few other things to put on this bike. But um, other than that, yeah, it'll be a 88cc uh big bore with the race head from bbr and then this thing will be on the channel next i definitely want to get to uh get somewhere i don't know I've, I've been talking to people about little events there's a few on the island but everyone else is like upstate new jersey and stuff like that but um i want to definitely get a little camera action with these bikes and uh show you guys a little bit of what we do out here on the island because you don't really see much of long island unless they're wheeling down the street and 
that's fun, but you know, I like to keep my bikes and I don't like to run all the time, all the time. But yeah, for the most part, um, that's where I'm at now. So I'm going to end this video off here and, uh, yeah, until next time, you know, like I said before, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments, leave it in the comment section. I'll get right back to you or whatever. Let me know what you guys want to see. Let me know what you like. Let me know what I need to improve on. And uh, yeah, see you next time.